in the year 2030. In the year 2030. In the year 2030. Environmentally. Socially. Economically. Technologically. Politically. My future will look like. There's a lot of doom and gloom messaging out there. Um, a lot of the stories are negative. We're getting fa facts thrown at us all the time that are, you know, deeply worrying. Um, and so I think there is that, that, you know, kind of baseline level of worry in that generation um, that can be quite paralyzing. Um, but, but through the programs, we really seek to kind of dismantle that and, and replace that with um, a sense of empowerment, a sense of agency. My name is Andrikas, I'm the Chief Executive of Action for Conservation um, and our mission as a charity is to inspire and empower young people between the ages of 12 and 18 to take action for the environment um, and have an impact in their communities and at a national level. This afternoon uh, we're working with DEFRA to um, give them an opportunity to input their views on uh, the future um, for the 2030 scenario planning um, exercise that they're doing. Um, I'm an Action for Conservation Ambassador. You get so many opportunities to go around the country and raise the word of conservation. I don't know what will happen in 2030. I do think that the way we're going on now, we're doing things that have consequences and that will have consequences on the next generations and us as the younger generation will have to deal with that. 2030 I would like to get rid of pollution, so like plastic pollution in the sea, sort of bring back the wildlife that we're losing. I would like a lot more biodiversity and a sort of integration between urban areas and wildlife. The biggest change, I think we'll have to work closer together, people, business and politics. And I think we'll realise that, we'll begin to come up with policies and um, people will start almost raise, making their voices heard. And I think undergoing that process and undergoing that change, I think that will kind of change how we see these issues. Yeah, what we've been working on there is the idea of developing a story to better understand what life will be like in 2030 from, from a personal perspective, which is a complete new angle for me because I'm used to more kind of objectively analysing things and, and what the future will hold. I'm introducing Ollie. He's 21 years old and lives in a squatter camp in London. It's the year 2030. Space travel has been stopped and the environment has been ruined. There's no bird song as there are no more animals and no more plants. He wants to go outside but has to put on a gas mask due to all the pollution. However, he groups together all his friends and they want to do a peaceful protest against the government. They're in an illegal political group as politics has been oppressed. The group gather together but their rebellion is immediately oppressed. However, Oliver is left more determined to right the wrongs of the government and make things back to how they should be. It's 2030. Let me introduce you to Anne-Marie. Most of her friends and family have moved to the moon for a better job and environment. The air was suffocating her lungs. She felt like she was trapped in a cage. She decided to go down the street, catch a shuttle and get off the next stop, which was the moon. Maybe she could get a job out there as a waitress and save up enough money to get a house on Mars. Her life was hard. There was no spaces, no vegetation on Earth. She had to go. So let me introduce you to Lucy. She's a young 19-year-old farmer. However, recently she's um, received a letter saying that she's been caught using illegal fertilisers. So these degrade the landscape and pollute surrounding areas and get into our waterways. She wrote a letter to DEFRA saying that she's not even allowed cows whose grazing can increase yields 
DEFRA replies and they've given her grants to own this tractor. Um, new technology enables it to detect what is useful crops and what is other plants. Um, they also suggest she plants meadows and other pollinating, in increasing and benefiting plants. I am definitely looking forward to 2030. It's, it's exciting to see what the future holds. I, I very much hope and I think it's, it's likely that we'll be definitely working towards a better future. It's us who's going to live through these issues, so it needs to be our voice. This is my future. 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 This is my future.